If you have your Bibles, let's go to the word of the Lord found in the book of Genesis chapter number 17. And if you have a rock, how many of you came in with your rocks? If you don't have a rock, raise your hand. We want to give you a rock. You got to have a rock because this is a part of the message tonight. I would throw it, but he who has... I'll take it to I'll take it anyway. You, 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 you got a couple of rocks, huh? You got to get a rock. Everybody got to get a rock. Now, I need you to hold on to that rock until we get to the part of the message where I'm going to tell you exactly what to do with that rock, and I promise you, it won't be to throw it. But I need, I need you to hold on to that rock. It's going to make sense in just a little while. Y'all give me a few minutes to map this, this thought. This is a word of the Lord. I believe that's going to help us. You know, I'm on this, I'm on this journey of talking about distractions. Yeah. And we've been talking about outside distractions that affects our lives. Um, and, and we talked about how to remove some distractions because we believe, I believe, and I hope you believe along with me, that, that if we can get rid of some of these distractions, we can open the way for manifestation. I'm going to show you something tonight out of the word of the Lord that bears witness to what I just said. That if we can get rid of some distractions, we make way for manifestation. Let, let me go a little bit deeper. There's some manifestation that's going to come to you only when you get rid of some of these distractions. So what are you saying? I'm saying that some of the distractions are preventing you from getting the kind of manifestation that God has promised you. Genesis chapter number 17. Let's go to the word of God. Listen to this story. I'm listening very carefully to this story. And I'll, I'll try to, I'm going to exegete it along the way and kind of break it down a little bit and kind of talk about it. And then I'm going to get into some principles and, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the end of this thing. Uh, Genesis chapter 17, beginning at verse number 15. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, and that's with the I on the end of her name at that particular time, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Now here's something that I find interesting, and I'm going to try not to do this to every verse, but every word of God is so good. Uh, I find this very interesting that, that Abraham and his wife would get a word or get the attention of God so much so that God will release unto them some very powerful words that would absolutely and totally shift their lives. I, I, I wanted to stop right there just for a second because I, I want to prophesy to somebody tonight that God's getting ready to send a word to your house. I've been praying all day that, that you're going to receive that's going to blow your mind. God's going to send a word to your house, to your life, that's going to blow your neighbors out the water. Only four people got a hold of that. Well, I'll, I'll, keep I'll take it to myself. Y'all mess with me. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's a word coming to your house. Now listen to what he says in verse number 16. He says, and I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. This is King James Version. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. What a promise. What a word. And that word extends beyond her. I'm prophesying to somebody right now because there's a word coming to your house that's going to extend beyond you. All right, let me get, let me get to the story. Let me get to the story. Then Abraham, okay, this is the part that really messes me up. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Did this ninja laugh at the word of the Lord? What? And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me, unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, this is what Abraham said, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son. They're having this, this amazing part of this, this whole, they're having this conversation. And God says, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. <laughs> and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. This is, I'm going to try. This is the most amazing conversation. And there are parts of this conversation that makes it so amazing. 
God begins to speak to Sarah and to Abraham. And when he says to Sarah, knowing that she's above, way beyond the age of having a child, but he speaks a word to her that reminds her that he's in control. Now, he doesn't come out and say that, but he does say things that she should recognize that what he says, only he can do. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you get a word from the Lord, you can rest assured that he'll make it possible. He's going to make it good. Now, now the, the thing that gets my attention even more is that after he says this, no doubt, Abraham is in the midst. And he overhears this. And the story says he goes to laughing. First mistake. He laughs. Okay, let me give you my subject for tonight. It's a little long. What do you do when mistakes and miracles are in the same house? What do you do when mistakes and miracles are in the same house? <laughs> Abraham, first mistake was he laughs at what God says. Can, can I encourage somebody? Whatever you do, don't laugh at what God says. Because something about you laughing at him makes him want to do it even the more. Because <laughs> you think he's a joke. God is not a joke. He laughs, and then, then he makes an incredible promise after, well, well, no, let me go back. After he laughs, then he says, because I know the condition of myself and my wife, there is a way that this can happen. Meaning, the miracle of the promise, there's a way it can happen, and then he names it. He says, Ishmael is the one. Second mistake. Because Ishmael was not the one. Then God speaks because he says, Abraham, you're not getting this. Let me go back and talk to your wife. It's, it's a shame when, when God is speaking and you don't get it, so he got to talk to your neighbor. Because you you, you're not getting it. You're not receiving it. You're not embracing it. It's amazing how we all be in the same room hearing the same word, but we don't get the same promise made for us. Then he turns to Sarah and he says, your wife shall bear a son. And then he says, the name of the child shall be Isaac. So, I wanted to talk about mistakes and miracles living in the same house. So I, I did a little research. Mistakes, a fault in understanding. Mistakes come through bad perception. Mistakes are wrong interpretations of something, an idea, the wrong answer. Mistakes are acts that are, are wrong. It's a mistake. It's, it's wrong. It's an error. Yeah, this mistakes. You fumbled over something. An inaccuracy. It's, it's a blunder. <laughs> you brought confusion. It was wrong. It was a mistake. Let me just do something real quick. How many of you have ever made a mistake in your life? Don't, don't put your hand up. It's a mistake. And, and sometimes we, we label our mistakes as harmless mistakes. And then there's another kind of mistake. Uh, bottom line is it is a mistake. If it falls in the category, it, that's what it is. And then there are miracles. Let, let me just tell you what a miracle is. A miracle is an event or action that apparently contradicts scientific laws. And it's hence thought to be due to supernatural causes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got excited when I read that, because I know y'all know that a miracle is that which comes from God, but it's, it's more than just a miracle that comes from God. A miracle is that which science cannot figure out how it happened. A, a miracle of God takes itself outside of the realm of what is. A miracle is that which God produces that was not. So much so that you didn't even have a picture of it. The only thing that you could do with a miracle is receive it. 
I'm looking for a miracle. No. Okay. So we live in a world that is full of mistakes and almost void of miracles. The reason that we live in such a, a world is merely because of the perception of humanity. We focus. We focus most of the time as human beings. We focus on the mistakes more than we do the miracles. We spend a lot of time complaining about what was done wrong. And we never take as much time as we need to to thank God for what has been done right. Focus, focus. Dwight D. Howard, Eisenhower, I'm sorry, he writes, nothing is easy in war. Mistakes are always paid for in casualties. And that seems to be the view of fallen man. Mistakes often override the miracles in our lives. When our, when our mistakes are brought to God, he has a way of, of removing the things that create failure in our spiritual walk. But still there is, a, there is, a, there is, there is that, that often nagging thought, that nagging reminder of the mistake we made. The one mistake that brought you embarrassment. That that, that one mistake, and even though you came to church and you were dancing, you were shouting, but back in your mind somewhere, that one, that, that, that mistake that you made that, uh oh this is not for most of y'all, that ruined your witness. That, that, one, that one mistake that, that, that haunts you, that, and I, I know you got the blood over it, but it is that one mistake that, that's never far, far from your mind. It's, and even when you declare it's under the blood, but it's not far from your mind. The blood of Jesus is something that is supernatural. Your mind is something that is natural. The mistake rises and stands before you when you, you know, when you, remember when you start to pray? And as you begin to pray, you remember the mistake? I can't get no help and no truth in these people tonight, Lord. You remember when you even felt the hand of God moving on your soul in one service, but, but while you were raising up your hand to give God praise and adoration for what you felt, but there was still that, wait a minute. But I made that mistake the other night. I, I, and and then we, I didn't mean to, but, but I did it. It's the mistake that mocks when you lift your hands in worship, the mistake that, that laughs at you when you volunteer, you volunteer to be on the prayer shift. You, you said, I'm coming to all night prayer. And on your way there, you begin to remember. But I failed God over there. If, if you find yourself in that position because sometimes we do the word of God has the power to give you the faith to rise up and the spirit of God is able to provide the deliverance from the mistake let me, let me rehearse just for a second these, these four people in this particular story of Genesis there's this guy by the name of Abraham the man that God called out of the land of, of Chaldees the, the searcher he's Abraham the searcher for the city whose builder and maker was God it's, it's Abraham, it's Abraham. Then there's Sarah. Sarah is, is the wife of the old patriot Abraham, faithfully followed Abraham into the land that, that God was going to uh, lead them to. They, they, were, they, were, they were going to Canaan. They were going to the land that flowed with milk and honey, and Sarah was going with Abraham. We going. Oh, we are. Oh. Then there's this Ishmael. Ishmael is this baby that is not born from Sarah. It's this Ishmael, the son born to Abraham in his moment. This is a son that's born unto, unto Abraham who was born in the moment of Abraham's doubting. A mistake. Then there's this Isaac kid. Isaac was the promise that was fulfilled in the old age of Abraham and Sarah. But there is far more to the story that I don't have time to get 
into. I want to get to the good part. Because I'm reminded of, and I've got it in my notes, I'm reminded of, of Samson in, in Judges chapter number 15. You, you remember the story, and he, he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines, 20 years. Then, then comes Samson um, to Gaza, the Bible says, and, and saw there and, and harlot, and, and went in unto her. He made a mistake. But the deepness of the mistake was not that he did it in the moment that he did it, but he had this lust in his heart. All the while, it was just waiting for an opportunity to reveal itself. I, I, I don't have time to, to break that one down. But the same thing that happened to Samson also happened to Abraham. This, the origin of the mistake of Abraham if you, if you can be reminded of the story, and I jotted down just a few points. First of all, Abraham found himself involved at this particular time in a famine. Be careful, saints, what you hear and what you do when you're in a famine. Because it's the famine that can trick you and make you do stuff that you should not be doing. It's like, I think there's a story in the Bible, and in Matthew's gospel is this story in the Bible that talks about the dry places. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, it talks about the dry places when the de demons go out, and, and they, when they go out, they, they're looking for a place to go, and, 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 and the place that they're looking for is a dry place. Y'all you, you got to be careful when you are in a spiritual dry place. Some of us don't even know when we're in a spiritual dry place. I'll talk about that a little bit more a little, a little bit later. He, he's in a famine. He's in a dry place, and he's in the right place geographically, but he removes him. Glory to God. He's in the right place geographically. He's in Canaan, but the story says that he leaves Canaan to go back to Egypt. Be careful that when you're in a spiritual famine that you don't go seeking result-seeking answers in the world. That was big right there. Because we get desperate when we're in the famine. We're desperate when we don't feel what's happening should be happening. It's not happening. Things are not moving like we're supposed to be moving. I need to do something else. I need to do something else. Be careful. Because you can end up making a mistake. Mm. Let me get to the good part. Okay. He goes to Egypt. Abraham forsook his, he forsook his altar and his tent to go to Egypt. His altars and his tents were meeting places with God, but, but he left them to go to Egypt. He left them. What a mistake. Because it was in Egypt that the wells, the wheels of the mistake begin to turn. When you're, when you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you will make mistakes. I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know I'm talking to nobody. But you got to be careful when you're in a famine that you don't relocate yourself. I, I, I'm thinking about this story of Mephibosheth. He's, he's in a famine. he got family problems. And he makes a mistake by hooking up with people that he should not be hooked up with who don't know and understand who he is. Grandson of Saul the king, the son of Jonathan. He's in divine order to be a part of the kingdom, but he does not remember who he is. So he's in a famine. He's in a loss for himself. And when he can't find himself, he goes to ask the world, who is he? And the world recognizes him as nobody. Makes mistake one right after the other. <laughs> oh, God. So Hagar was picked by Sarah to be her handmaid so that what God, is, so that what God promised can come to pass. You be careful who you assign to what God has already refined. He had already refined Sarah, even in, her early, and even in her old age, to be the one to bring forth the child. But because she doesn't see it in herself, go 
oh, do I need to go there for? She doesn't not, she doesn't see it in herself. What is it that you don't see in yourself that makes you make mistakes? Oh, because you don't see it. In, you don't see that you are a victor and not a victim. You don't. You 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 wallow in self pity because somebody. Why am I getting all excited? You say you can't do this and you can't do that is because you you don't you have you have encased yourself. I always say this in your self-imposed limitations. You're not being swallowed up by the world. You're being swallowed up by yourself. I struggled with this tonight. Nick, I, I struggled with this tonight trying to figure out how can, I, how can I say to you, the people of God tonight, that you have to be so very careful that you don't move yourself in places where you don't belong because of what you hear. And you, you hear what you hear on the outside and you don't pay attention to what God is placing on the inside. So you give more value to what others are saying than you hear God say. Have, have mercy, Lord. And that's when you find yourself one mistake after another. One mistake. So it becomes one of the greatest mistakes, but, but there's, there's hope. Ishmael. Ishmael is on the scene. Ishmael, Ishmael the son of doubt. But Isaac the son of the promise. Let me challenge somebody to what do you want? Do you want what makes you comfortable and answers your question? Or do you want the promise? Because the promise may not look like an easy thing to attain. It may not even look like a possibility. Sarah, Abraham, it's impossible. But there's always a God who attaches you to a promise that is up to you choosing what you're going to receive. I dare you to hit your neighbor one good time and, and turn him a little bit and say, what is it that you really want? Do you, do you want the Ishmael or do you want the Isaac? Ishmael is the work of the flesh. Isaac is the work of the spirit. Ishmael is Abraham's mistake. Isaac is Abraham's miracle. And they both are living in the same house. The mistake and the miracle, I'm, I'm going to close it, is living in the same house. There is always, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk to y'all, a problem when the mistake and the miracle live together. If in us there are mistakes and at the same time there is God, it's going to be a problem because that's going to be a major conflict. I see you check in the mail. A major conflict. What happens is the mistake starts to speak to the miracle. The mistake tries to insult the miracle. The Ishmael starts to badger Isaac. I was here first. I'm the real son. Some of y'all got some mistakes in you that's speaking so loud right now. It's hard for you, it's hard for you to live in the miracles of God because your mistakes and the miracles are living in the same house and the mistakes are really, really speaking real loud right now. Almost to the place where some of you come to church and you would lift your hands a little bit higher, but you can't because there's always this nagging of mistakes. Uh, I know you don't want to hear that because we come and we get covered under the blood. We come and, oh my God, we, we feel the anointing of God. My God, we come and we speak of the power of God, the move of God in every service that we're having. So there can't be no room for mistakes. Bishop, what are you, why are you doing this? Now, I'm doing this because the reality of who we are. <laughs> the reality of who we are 
and how we conduct ourselves is clear. Some of the things we do because, okay, uh, let me, uh, uh, I, 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 I said I wasn't going to go real deep into this, but I know I'm the apostle. I'm, I'm still getting used to saying that, y'all. I just want y'all to know that. I know I'm the bishop. I know I'm the pastor. I know I'm the leader. I know I'm the head. But that does not exempt me from every now and then making a mistake. Pastor Alex, I need you to shake your head yes or something because I need you all to know that we all have and have made mistakes along this Christian journey. Don't judge me what I don't care if you do because the same finger you point at me is pointing three more back at you. There is always, and, and I wish I could tell you, okay, I'm going to tell you about me now. There is always in me somewhere a, a reflection of some mistakes I made along this journey. No, let me stop playing with y'all. I, I made a mistake just the other week. I'm struggling with telling y'all if it was a sin or not. Because I don't think it was a sin, but I know it was a mistake. No, I'm, I know y'all got it together. You got your lives better together than I do. So <laughs> pray for me. No, pray for me. I need y'all to pray for me. Because I don't know if it was a sin. I don't think it was a sin, but I do know it was a mistake. And it was such a mistake that, that after it was, it was made clear to me that I made the mistake, I felt bad about it. I felt so bad about it that... Let's cut the streaming off because I don't need the world to know this about me. <laughs> I felt so bad about it that it brought a hesitation to pray. I, oh, I said, you got to pray for me. It was, it was that kind of mistake where I had to, when I did go into the word of God, I looked for an escape route. I looked for a scripture that would change the mistake I made even where it says and we know that all things work together for the good. I, I wanted to read that at least 500 times so I can convince myself that maybe I didn't make the mistake. <laughs> But I had to come to a sound conclusion that yes, you, you may be the good apostle. You may be the good singing preacher. You try. Thank God for the musicians. You, you may be the worship leader. But you still need to be careful of the mistakes no, you got to understand what I'm saying. You got to be careful that you don't let your mistakes. I'm not saying that you won't make no mistakes. You got to be careful that you don't let your mistakes control your destiny. I, I'm going to help somebody tonight because you, you think because you made the mistake, you have disqualified yourself from the promise. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Just because you realize you made the mistake, I come to tell you because of the goodness of Jesus, because of the faithfulness of Jesus, because his mercy endures forever, you may have made the mistake, but that doesn't mean you canceled out your promise. Last I checked, Samson made a mistake. David made a mistake. But the thing that got them to their promise was they had enough sense to repent and say, I'm, come here, Samuel, thou art the man. Oh. The Father, in his goodness toward us, gives us a way 
to become larger than the mistake, bigger than the mistake. Uh, I'm closing on this. So Abraham comes to a realization and understanding that there's something I got to do with these two entities living in the same house. He says, I got to do something about that. I got to do something. I just can't sit here day after day and listen to the argument. And it seems like the mistake is Ishmael is speaking louder than Isaac. <laughs> Maybe it's because Isaac knows who he is. So that he doesn't have to debate with what is not. But Abraham comes to this conclusion that I got to do something. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I help somebody tonight? Yeah, you made some mistakes. And you still got Jesus. But you still got to do something. Something has to happen. And I just want to give you the end of the story. Get, get, your, get your rocks in your hand. Get your rocks. Get your rocks in your hand. Get your rocks in your hand. Let me, let me, let me give it to you like I, like I typed it. Uh, uh, the father said, age, he decided, the father, Abraham, he says, I, I got to do something. Something has to be done with this situation. So what the father does is, the father sends Ishmael away. Ishmael was moved out of Isaac's way. He sends Ishmael away. He evicts Ishmael. He says, Ish, you can't live here no more. You got to go. I thought about this in relationship to this thing that I put in your hand, which is a rock. And I thought about the rocks as a symbol of mistakes. Now, you all have one in your hand. I got a bunch of them in my bag. You all have little ones. And let's just call what you got in your hand a mistake. You, you, you only got one. I got, I got a bunch of them. My mistakes, I got so many. Yeah. When I, when I, when I would do good, just. And sometimes my mistakes sounds louder. And then just when I thought I only had little ones, and here comes, here comes, here comes a bigger one. And, and it looks like when the, when the big one gets in, it, it, it creates holes. And the holes starts to affect the other. All of a sudden, all I can see is my mistakes. And then what I try to do is I try to gather them. Let me see if I could bring all these mistakes and put them back in a safe place. Uh, th then then maybe, maybe y'all like, like me sometime. Make a mistake and I'll, I'll dress it up in righteousness. It'll look real good. I mean, I make, I make that mistake look so good. <laughs> it's so good, but the truth of the matter is, it's still a mistake. And, and, and given the right moment, that mistake, which was small when it got in here, but because I didn't evict it, it got bigger, it got heavier, and it was hard to handle. So much so it became the focus of my life. I focused on that more than I focused on the miracle. I put rocks in your hands tonight because I, I need you to evict some mistakes. Abraham left the altar in Canaan to go down to Egypt. I need you to bring a 
people and say, oh, but you ain't got but one in your hand. But let's make that one rock that is hard. And some of you, if you handle it, you, you can feel the dirt on it. This is what mistakes do. They get real hard. And after a while, it, it starts to shed. Dirt comes. I, I want you to do something for me tonight that maybe I don't know. Because we got to stop being distracted by our own mistakes. Because it's our own mistakes that's preventing us from getting a manifestation. So would you? I, well, maybe. Wait. Maybe you ain't made no mistakes. I salute you. I say God bless you. I say, I need you to write the book and I will read it. But if you have made some mistakes and there are times when God wanted to do something but you remembered the mistake and it slowed you down or, or you, it shook you a little bit, it, it may have even caused you to disqualify yourself from the promise, from the miracle. No, no, it's okay, God. You know me, God. You know me. I'm, you know how I am. When I smell that smell, that makes me do something that ain't got no bit. When I see that person, it makes me do. When I hear that song, it makes me keep making these mistakes. But, but tonight, the Lord told me to have you bring the mistakes to the altar. Evict them. Evict them from preventing you. Please hear me. Because some of y'all going to leave me and say, mm, I don't know. you know, Bishop, can I just do that thing on Thursday night? Hmm. Friday morning, I made another mistake. Uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> Thank you for that message on Thursday night. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, I need you to take your mistakes, evict them from your life so that it does, it no longer hinders you, distracts you from what God has promised you. Can we do that? Yeah. Don't wait for me. Come on, lay it on the altar. Just all, all on the altar. Just lay. Say, God, I am dismissing my mistakes. No longer going to let my mistakes stop me from my promise, from what God has provided for me. Just leave it there on the altar. Just leave it. Just leave it there on the altar. Just leave it on the altar. Just leave it on the altar. It's gone. Because mistakes and miracles cannot dwell in the same house. There will be times when your mistakes will speak louder. Just when you get ready to make a faith move, that when that devilish mistake will rise up and remind you, you tried that before and you never got it right. You did that the other week and you know you didn't get it right. You tried that relationship and it didn't turn out right. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're leaving the mistakes at this altar. And the mistakes will no longer distract you from what God has promised you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. No more moments of doubt when faith arises. No more mistakes. The mistakes will no longer smother the miracle. It will no longer harass my miracle. It will no longer pester my miracle. My mistakes will no longer speak and declare stories over my miracle. I receive. I receive, Lord, tonight that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Nothing will be able to separate me from the love of God. My whole, my whole point tonight, and we're going to go, my whole point tonight was that you would no longer allow your mistakes to distract you from your promise. So I need you to know you got a promise waiting for you. And that we're taking these, these, these sessions together, we're taking these moments to get rid of all of the distractions so we can step into our manifestation of miracles. Signs and wonders. You ready to go there? Come on, jump up on your feet and give God a good praise tonight. Oh, glory to God. Tonight, tonight.
tonight, maybe it was a confrontation, a mistake. Maybe it was somebody abusing you, a mistake. Maybe it was a dishonest uh, thing that you did. Maybe, maybe you didn't obey God, a mistake. Whatever it was, I need you to know that tonight it will no longer be the distraction to prevent you from your miracle. No, maybe, maybe you, <laughs> maybe you did something, maybe you did something the other day that I did. I was so mad at a situation that I caused. I was so mad. And y'all can't make Pastor Alex a pastor when I tell you. <laughs> you, there's no impeachments going on up in here. I was so mad that I threw stuff. No, I didn't go drinking. I didn't go smoking and canceling and carrying on. But I, I knew me. And the situation made me so mad. I don't know if you've ever been there. I was so mad that I threw stuff. Not at anybody. I'll tell you. Because I know if I, if I don't tell you, if I don't be truthful to you and tell you the truth, you'll start to um, imagine stuff. I had got some ice cream from my doctor who makes ice cream for me. And it's not the regular kind of ice cream. It's the doctor's ice cream. He put it in this container for me. I put it in the back seat of my car with other foods and things that I got from my doctor. And I was driving home. I got home. When I got home, I got out of the car. I went and got look in the back seat to get, take the bags out. And the, the ice cream top had come off. Ice cream all over the back seat in the crevice. It had melted and went everywhere. I just got this car. No. And I'm like, how did you? I'm mad with myself. I went, and I went, I went in the house. I didn't go in the house. I went in the house, slammed the door, got the paper towels. I got the whole roll of paper towels. I, I started to wipe it up, and it just started to smear all over the place. Made me more mad. I threw that paper towel. OK, that's the end of my story. I'm going to start right there. All because I made the mistake by not checking the lid. Because all I had to do was check the lid, secure it. But I made the mistake because I was in a hurry. We all go through those moments. And, and, and it is in those times, in those moments, that you got you to gotta get a different kind of mindset and not let that mistake become the wall, the hindrance the blockage. God still has a promise for you. 